All right, let's continue the conversation about investing with Michael Cugino joining us, the president and portfolio manager of the permanent portfolio family of funds. Starting with the macro here, uh, Michael, what's the biggest piece of the fund right now? What, where you got the most conviction? Uh, our strategy is designed to not have huge conviction in any one area, but to hedge our bets in a number of them. So I would say that's really unchanged. I think in the macro environment going forward, I'm, I'm not sure how much new I can add at this point. The Fed is close to being done, if not done. They're likely going to cut rates at some point this year, but rates are going to be higher for longer based on the data we've, we've seen, including today's PCE number. Um, there's a high concentration in the equity market right now in a richly valued equity market, um, broadly speaking, index-wise, although some names, there's quite a bit of value because it is so concentrated. So you want to spread your bets out in terms of the equity market. Um, and bonds are interesting right now, um, especially the short duration, high quality corporate space where you can find a lot of opportunities for very good yield without going too far out on the duration curve. So there's a lot of places to put some money and uh, that, that have potential and combining a lot of them in one portfolio um, minimizes downside risk, reduces broader volatility and provides, we think, a return over time that will exceed the inflation rate. As we were just talking about the high concentration of the market, the broad index most concentrated since the 70s, does that change any of the approach in the way you balance out your equity exposure? Does that require any adaptations to the strategy? It does, because I think, you know, we've, we've obviously, uh, we own NVIDIA, for example, and a couple of the other names that have moved quite a bit in this AI um, concentrated environment. So there's a risk where you like the company. Um, we do like it long term, but you still have to maintain balance and diversification. So We've trimmed as it's gone up along the way. Doesn't mean we don't like the company, but you do have to trim, but you also have to be cognizant of the tax impact of these trades. So it is it is a little bit more challenging. You have more concentration and you have winners um, because you want to balance taxable income and taxable gains and portfolio diversification and looking for opportunities that are going to be tomorrow or next month's opportunities that uh, that haven't flowered yet. And so I think that is one area that we spend a lot of time on, on the equity side, um, looking for those opportunities and, and managing the equity side of the portfolio. One of the tech stocks uh, you like, Broadcom, has yet to give us their latest report, but the shares keep climbing. Give me a quick snapshot of what you're looking for. Yeah, I mean, interestingly enough, um, it's a great company. It's participated in some of this AI euphoria. Um, it's cheaper than most of the other semiconductors right now. It's got a PE of roughly the high 20s um, based on our calculations versus 30s, 40s, 60s, you know, depending on which company you're talking about. Even I think ARM is, uh, is up in the hundreds PE. Um, so, I mean, they're very expensive. We think long term, it's a growth area. It's cheaper than the rest. It's, it's not cheap based on the market. So you might wait for a pullback here, but it's a very good company, we think, over the long term. Okay. Uh, the trade outside of stocks, gold and commodities, generally most commodities have been pretty soft. Crude oil's trying to warm up a little bit. Uh, what plays a role there and, and how much? If inflation's done, do commodities need to have a role in the, in the fund or are they kind of a pure hedge then, I guess? Uh, no, they're more than a pure edge, although they have that function, especially in a declining dollar environment um, and, a, and a larger, you know, economic demand versus supply situation. Um, commodities right, rightfully have been, have been lower because of a higher dollar, because of lack of global demand, um, anemic global growth, if there is any, in recessions in some areas. Um, and so we think long term that's going to change. The dollar's, you know, trading at has been trading at a high level now for practically a decade or more. We don't think it's sustainable long term when the when the globe reverts back to a growth mode. We think a lot of commodities, um, copper, for example, energy. Um, we think that when demand picks up, supply constraints are going to show up. There's been underinvestment in these areas. And so we think it's a big growth area going forward, but you've had to be patient. Um, these companies also pay dividends. They're very good um, 
allocators of returns of capital, whether it's share buybacks, dividends, special dividends, and the like. So for total return investors that have a stomach and can wait, we think it's a big growth area um, for investors to take a look at or hedge against some of the uh, the higher flying tech type space. Uh, should we be looking for highs in gold for the gold trade warm up if the Fed's done hiking? Well, it's interesting. The, the PCE number today, I think, was not a surprise to the market, and it gave some comfort that the numbers from a week or two ago, you know, inflation, while maybe spiking, um, you know, maybe isn't going back to the races, okay? And I think there was a little bit of that issue out there uh, based on some of the numbers a week or two ago. Um, our view has always been that it would be easier for, for inflation to go from 9% to 3 or 4%. And then that final leg going from three or four down to two would be difficult. And the Fed may have to choose between a gradual approach and let it glide back to two or be very, very aggressive and have it go to two but risk a recession. It looks like they're looking for the long, higher for longer type thing, maybe let it glide back to 2% and monitor things, which we think is the right approach. So the PCE number today reflected that. And I think gold as a result um, traded off of that, you know, you're talking one day trade, but but in the environment where the Fed is done and likely cutting, where central banks are buying, where there's a potential demand for alternative currency besides the dollar in global transactions, um, and an uncertain inflation environment and, and potential concern in the financial system or the banking sector or credit. Um, gold is very attractive going forward. It's been in a trading range lately. It's down about 1% for the year so far. Um, so we think it's very attractive going forward. All right. Uh, good conversation, fitting the pieces together. Thanks as always, Mike. All right, Oliver, take care of yourself. You too. Michael Cagino, President and Portfolio Manager at the Permanent Portfolio Family of Bonds.